in the early part one of this uh, four part on the use of adding an analog to digital converter to the Arduino and testing it with the analog discovery, we talked a little bit about the configuration between the Arduino and the uh, MCP3008. We didn't talk very much about the actual uh, circuitry nor about the interface mechanism, the SPI. I included a, uh, an extract of an earlier video I did in which I was using the uh, analog discovery and the Rigol oscilloscope to decode SPI and I hope you've watched that but that's if you haven't I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of what SPI is all about. So here is the circuitry and the connections between the Arduino on the left and even though this shows an Uno R3 I'm actually using a Mega uh, but it works the same way with an Uno and you'll notice that there are four wires that make up the SPI interface between the Arduino and the MCP3008. They are chip select MOSI, which is master out, slave in, MISO, which is master in, slave out, and clock. Chip select is what actually turns this chip on and off. I don't mean the power, but I mean actively on the SPI connection. So only when chip select is low, it's an active low signal, is this signal sending or receiving information over the data lines and using the clock to do that. The clock provides the timing. MOSI are the signals that the master, in this case the Arduino, is sending to the slave. That's why it's called master out, slave in. The signals that the slave sends back to the master is called master in, slave out. I suppose they could have called it the slave out, master in, uh, but you know how these things go. Let's now look a little bit at what SPI is all about and then we'll talk about using the analog discovery to actually monitor this SPI connection. This is a timing diagram for the SPI bus that comes from the MCP 3004-3008 uh, data sheet. At the top you see is the chip select line which uh, is actually active low, in other words when, it go, when the chip select goes from a 1 to a 0 is when the chip is selected. Then the uh, Arduino, or whatever the master is, sends data on the data in line, and that's the data in to the uh, MCP3000. In other words, it's the MOSI. Master out, slave in. Whenever I talk about the, the MCP, that's the slave, and whenever I talk about the Arduino, that's the master. So, it sends data in to, the, the Arduino does, sends data into the MCP. Then, the MCP responds with the appropriate data reading out each channel. Remember this is an eight channel device, at least the one I'm using. They make it in a four channel also. And that is the MISO, which is the last signal here. So what we are going to uh, do in a minute is we're going to look at these signals on the analog discovery, which is, will decode an SPI bus. But before we do that, I think it would be helpful to look at the program that we're running in the Arduino. Here are the define statements for the connection between the Arduino and the MCP. You notice that we would have defined uh, the CS pin, which is the chip select as pin 12, 
the clock pin as pin 9, the Mosey as pin 11, and the Miso as pin 10. If you try to run this program with this include statement and, it, and the compiler says it can't find this file, it's because you haven't downloaded the library. So uh, if you run into that problem, go back and watch uh, part one again and be sure you've downloaded the correct library. This is the pinout diagram that comes from the analog discovery documentation. We are going to be using these signals. In other words, we're, we're going to be using the first four. Those are the connections that we're going to make and over here you can see those wires are actually connecting the analog discovery over to the uh, connections between the MCP and the Arduino. So now let's take a look at the program actually running on the uh, Arduino IDE. The file I have modified with one difference and I have called it ADC Simple 2. So I'm now going to load that one and we now have this file. The one change that I have made is to add a delay statement that I'll show you in a minute. There's a, at the very top are some comments and then the include statement that we talked about earlier that comes from the download site. Then you define the pins and these are the pins on the Arduino not the pins on the MCP. You have to connect the pins on the MCP appropriately. Then you construct an MCP 3008 object. Now for those of you that have not uh, been trained in uh, object-oriented programming all this really means is you, you create an instance or a uh, one copy of the, the ADC object. In other words, in software you are creating an object that represents the physical hardware object uh, MCP3008. Then you go into the uh, setup routine, which is the normal setup, and in this particular case all we are doing is opening the serial port. In other words, the serial, we're going to use the serial monitor. We go into the actual code, the loop, and you read a value from the A to D converter. You then write that value to the serial monitor. And then here is the, the delay statement that I put in, delay 1000. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Below that is some code that has been commented out. This slash star followed by a, another slash star or star slash down at the bottom means the compiler ignores all of this for now. This is code you would use if you wanted to read all the channels of the ADC. We're not going to use that, but I just thought I'd let you know what it is in case you're curious. So basically what we're doing is reading the uh, analog to digital converter, sending what we read over to the serial monitor, waiting a second, and then doing it again. Let's compile. We download the program to the Arduino and if we get any errors, like a communications error or whatever, we would see error signals once again in the messages window. We don't get any, so we now know that we are downloaded. Now let's look at the Arduino and notice that there is an LED, a little hard to see in that view, that is blinking right here. That is the rate at which the ADC is being read. Now, what we are going to do is, over here in the program, we are going to change the delay statement to 100. We're now going to save that as the new code, 
and then we're going to compile it. Once again, you notice that we did not get any compile errors. So now we are going to download that to the Arduino. And once again, no errors. However, look at what has happened now to the LED. It's now blinking at a very fast rate because now we are only delaying 100 milliseconds between each reading of the ADC. Okay, now let's open the serial monitor by clicking this icon in the upper right hand corner of the IDE. And you see you get this, which is reading out the ADC values. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the input of the ADC from ground to VCC. And you notice it starts reading out 1023. That's the highest value that you can get from the ADC. So now let's go over and take a look at the analog discovery. Here is the display from the analog discovery. So now let's look at how you would set up an SPI bus knowing what we know about the uh, the connections. First you click to add channels and it asks do you want to add a single signal? Do you want to add a bus? Do you want to add a protocol decoder? In this we want to add an SPI. Notice there are several others uh, that are available. So we want to add SPI. Now it asks us for a sequence of information including the chip select so we need to set that to the data input that is connected to chip select the clock we need to set that one and the data we need to set that one so let me do that now I have set up the data input 0 to be the chip select line, the data input 3 to be the clock line, and the data input 1 to be the data line. Now those are the, the uh, channels 0, 1, and 3 for the digital input or the uh, logic analyzer. Now I'm going to click on Add, and you will notice that we now have uh, the bus up above. Now you have to trigger, you have to select a trigger. In this case, we're going to trigger on the chip select falling. As you can see over here to the right, we are getting the same display that we got earlier. Now, if we edit the data to be data 2. Now we are looking at the MISO line, in other words the master in slave out, and you'll notice that it is uh, 255. That is the highest value that the ADC can send. We're now going to move the input from VCC to ground, and you notice now the MISO is sending back zero, which is the lowest value. I hope this has been useful to you in assessing how useful devices like the Arduino, as well as the analog discovery can be, in working with digital circuits. So once again, I hope you have enjoyed this four-part look at how you interface a analog to digital converter chip to the Arduino, how you download the libraries and the other support that you need to test it, how you then hook that up to an analog discovery and look at the signals being sent back and forth between the Arduino and this external chip. 
I hope this will inspire you perhaps to start trying some of this yourself. If you don't have an Arduino uh, and you can afford one, they're not that expensive. Uh, the cheaper ones, you can get clones for as little as $10. I think I paid $35 for this Mega, but uh, that's basically the range. The analog discovery we've talked a lot about. This chip costs uh, two to three dollars depending on where you buy it on the uh, on the internet so once again for very little money you can get into what I find a very rewarding uh, experimental situation once again look forward to seeing you in some future videos and in the meantime have a nice day